so good morning uh, everybody uh, welcome back to uh, the uh, session of uh, introduction to uh, digital signal processing so in previous uh, class we were discussing uh, regarding uh, the overview required for dsp algorithms and architecture so now in uh, continuation uh, we have started off with the module 1 uh, so in that uh, we came across to know what is the dsp uh, system uh, so in a typical block diagram i had uh, discussed so a quick uh, uh, recap of this so input is analog and output is analog for this typical uh, block diagram of the dsp system so if input is analog dsp requires a digital signal to process it so for this purpose what we have to do is we have to pass the analog signal from a to d converter so before doing this we pass it through anti-aliasing filter and then take the samples and uh, then go ahead with quantization so which overall leads to a to d conversion so anti-aliasing filter is uh, used to satisfy the condition that sampling frequency is greater than or equal to two times fm where fm is the maximum frequency which is present in this analog signal or the band limited signal what we call so once we do this, we'll be getting a digital signal over here and then uh, it is given to the DSP processor wherein we can perform any of the uh, processing actions. Say if you want to uh, put it, pass it through a filter, let's say a digital filter. So there uh, you can pass that signal through a filter if you want to transform it. So you can transform the signal and uh, do some analysis. So th this is what is done. So the result of that is again a digital signal now uh, suppose uh, at the other end uh, i want back the analog signal that is after the processing after the processing of the signal i want back the analog signal so what i do is i pass this uh, digital signal through t to a converter which is the reverse of a to d converter that is digital to analog so again i try to get back the original signal from whatever digital information i am having then apart from this, uh, I, I can pass it through a reconstruction filter, which is nothing but, uh, say, many of the times it is the low pass filter. So again, uh, if anything is present and you don't want uh, those signals to be present in the output, so I'll be removing them. So at the end, I'll be getting the analog signal. So this is just a, uh, say, a overview of the system. So if I divide this, that is, filter separate, A to D separate, then we take an ultra separate, this separate. So I'll be getting the overall uh, system for the uh, DSP, that is digital signal processing. So here if I just observe, it gives you the sequence. There it was just a combination, if you just divide it, so this is the overall digital signal processing system. So in this case, uh, again if you just observe, it is again the recap of the previous uh, block diagram itself. Input is analog and here output is analog. In between, I'll be dealing with the digital signal which will be utilized by the DSP processor. So when I pass the analog uh, signal, what I do is I pass it through anti-aliasing filter. So generally it is the low pass filter. Again, for what condition? To satisfy the Nyquist criteria. It is to satisfy the Nyquist criteria which specifies that if you're choosing the sampling frequency, uh, so which is actually required in this stage it is required in this stage so before going to this stage right that's why we pass it through a low pass filter so here what we are doing uh, we have to choose a sampling frequency such that i'll be getting samples in appropriate form if i don't get samples in an appropriate form then uh, we come across what is known as aliasing so that will that will uh, check out in the uh, next slides so in order to satisfy this condition right uh, that is for the next stage we pass it through a filter and remove all the frequencies which are higher than fm because fm is what fm is the highest frequency which is present in this analog signal no frequency other than that can be present that is the intention so if that is present then it might be noise or due to interference it might be coming up so that those all things are avoided that is what is happening so once you uh, uh, filter right uh, you'll be getting uh, uh, getting a signal uh, uh, which is uh, passed from the yellow pass filter and we'll be getting some appropriate uh, signal over here using which i can get the samples uh, so but uh, in uh, that is we pa passing it through a to d converter so what happens in a to d converter 
first step what happens is you will be passing it through what is called as sampling so after sampling right uh, you pass it through something called as quantizer i hope you have uh, gone through these topics in your digital communication uh, quantization so it will be passed through quantization so once these two processes are done right that time i'll be getting a i'll be getting a digital signal that is what will be happening here okay uh, so a to d will be uh, will be sampling plus quantization together now here one thing to keep in mind is when we are sampling when we are taking the samples when we are performing the operation we have to choose a particular frequency which is called a sampling frequency and this i cannot choose it in any form the sampling frequency has to be chosen based on the Shannon's theorem or Nyquist criteria that is fs greater than 2 times fm so once i once this is satisfied right i'll be getting some appropriate samples which can be sent for processing further so here uh, a to d converter analog uh, at this stage also it is analog so analog signal is given to a to d converter i'll be getting a digital signal now I pass it through a DSP uh, processor which will process this digital signal I say as I specified in previous slide the uh, processing can be uh, you go ahead for filtering IR, FIR filters or any other stuff and then once that is done you again will be getting back the digital signal so now uh, if I want back again original analog signal right what I have to do is I have to pass it through a digital to analog converter because here also the data will be in terms of uh, zeros and ones so what I do is, based on how it is, how the uh, quantization is being done, and so many bits are used for quantization, so those all things matter when we are dealing with these things. Uh, so what we do is, this digital signal is taken and the reverse process is done, wherein we convert this digital information again back to analog information. So at this stage, the output is again analog. So here, uh, what happens is in this process again, uh, some things might be added or some things might be unwanted. So what we do is again we pass it through a low pass filter. So here also we are doing a low pass filter. The signal what we have got, we are trying to recover. So here we'll be getting back the original information. So that is what we are doing in the overall digital signal processing system. So now. Uh, let us have a look at the sampling process. Uh, now, as uh, previously I mentioned, uh, that ADC, that is, it is analog to digital converter or A to D, uh, sometimes we write it as A slash D, A to D converter. Uh, it involves uh, one major uh, thing, that is the first step, that is obtaining the samples from the signal. Now, generally what happens is, uh, we'll be having some uh, continuous signals. Say, this is the speech signal, what is present, so I'm uh, talking. So if I trace it down on the uh, voltage representation, right? Some of the uh, this thing might be high voltage, some low voltage, then very high, so something in this range. But what happens is uh, you know, when I check out the overall signal, what happens is if I specify as A, A might be something appearing like this, and if I specify B, B might be appearing something like this, C might be something like this, then D might be something like this. So something in uh, this form, and a uh, few of the signals might be just dragging them. So here, what happens is, in this overall signal, right? Uh, if I'm speaking of voice, in this overall signal, the frequency that can be maximum present is, for example, it is 20 kilohertz because it is the audio range. It is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It is the audio range. The frequency that can be present is only in this range. If it goes beyond this, it does not fall in the audio range. In communication, we have fixed uh, frequency band within which the communication happens. Uh, now, uh, in this case, right, uh, if 20 kilohertz is the maximum, whether it appears in this part or not, there is a chance that 20 kilohertz can appear. 20 kilohertz can appear if, I'm, if I want to send the audio uh, information, right? 20 kilohertz is the maximum frequency which can occur. For example, if I just observe here, okay, this frequency appears to be very higher. But if I just check here, right, this is not a high frequency content. 
to say low frequency coupling. Here, if I just check out, this is higher as compared to this. So these these might be in 20 kilohertz, but this might be say it might be in one kilohertz. It might be one kilohertz. This might be two kilohertz. This might be three, and so on. But maximum which is present is 20 kilohertz. So here we get to know that the maximum frequency present in this one will be 20 kilohertz. Now this becomes important for the process of sampling. So this is the signal what I'm talking. So it is the audio signal, for example. This is the signal what I'm talking. So that is this one. Now, if I have to convert this information into digital form, right? I have to pass it. I have to first uh, take the samples, and uh, then after the sampling, right? We have to go ahead with quantization. So, in quantization, in short, if I just specify, so I'll be getting some samples. I'll be getting some samples. So, this is the overall envelope signal, and I have taken the samples. So, these are the sample values. So, here, what happens is these voltages, right? Have to be assigned some digital value that is zero and uh, zero and one combination, something of uh, this form. I am just taking a rough example here. It might be again following zero, one, zero, zero. So how many bits you are using? How many bits you are using for the representation? That depends on the quantization levels. How much you want? For example, if you remember, uh, you had something mid trade quantizer, something you had drawn, something you had in this form, right? Mid trade. If input is this, output is this, what will be the value? So, here if all, if you have four bits, then you have two raised to four levels possible. So, these are the things what you have. If voltage falls in this range, what happens? If voltage falls in this range, what happens? What should be the value? So, that is what we will be deciding over here. Uh, so that is uh, what quantization does in quantization based on uh, say the, the sample value is falling somewhere its voltage level is somewhere here so at this particular this thing what is its equivalent representation in terms of zeros and the ones that is what we decide in quantization uh, so this is in simple uh, what we are just specifying so the same thing uh, what i specified uh, previously that is the Nyquist criteria has to be Satisfied. If you don't satisfy, what happens? We'll just check out. Uh, this uh, basically, I have to do this in order to avoid the aliasing effect. Uh, aliasing occurs when this condition is not satisfied. If you have a signal whose frequency spectrum is in this form, say this is uh, yes, so yeah, you have frequency spectrum. So when you sample it, what happens is uh, these spectrums keep on repeating. So if you have satisfied the conditions, you will be having enough gap over here. Enough gap, that is, there is no overlapping of these things. So this is uh, the uh, condition wherein you are satisfying this case. Now what happens is, uh, if you don't satisfy the condition, what happens is, the spectrum gets overlapped with the next one. And here what happens is, there will be loss of information. This is the aliasing what we observe. So this part is giving us no information. It is giving us the wrong information. So in order to avoid such conditions, we have to take care of our sampling frequency. So that is what we are doing. Uh, so now, uh, as I just mentioned, quantization uh, involves assigning digital values, that is zeros and ones, to the samples what we have obtained from the process of sampling. Okay. Now the example of uh, sampling process. Now here, uh, uh, what is the first thing which is specified? Fs is equal to the signal maximum frequency. So this is what, this is the condition Fs is equal to Fm. So if you just observe, uh, uh, Fs is less than two times Fm. So this is the condition. Uh, so this is uh, called as undersampling. It is called as undersampling. Now here, uh, what does this imply is, now this is your original signal, and the sampling signal is also 
equivalent to the original signal. So what happens is uh, you take samples during every one bit period. Uh, sorry, uh, during every time interval of the sampling signal. Uh, say if, uh, if I just observe here, this is one period of uh, the signal and it is also the period of the sampling signal. It is period of the sampling signal. So for example, uh, here what happens if, uh, if I take the first sample at this point, if I take the first sample at this point, next sample will be available during the next uh, time period. That is once the time period is over, right? I'll be taking the next sample at that point. So in this case, since sampling frequency is same as the signal, its period also is same. That is at this point. Again, at this point, I'll be taking the second sample. Next one, third sample I'll be taking here, uh, which is again, uh, one cycle will be completed. Again, after one cycle is completed, again, I'll be taking the third one. So this keeps on continuing. Now, if you just observe here, what happens is, suppose if I uh, remove this, uh, remove the signal and just give you these sample values. If I remove the signal and if I just give you the sample values and I ask you to get back the original information, I'll ask you to get back the original information. Uh, then uh, there might be a confusion uh, whether uh, because I'll not be available, this information is not available, only these two points. So when I put it in a straight line, I'll be having like one sample here, 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 and one sample here. So if this thing is not available, if this thing is not available, you have done it and only this is available to you. I asked you to reconstruct the signal. Then what happens? Few of you might just add these lines. So this is not the signal, which is uh, the original signal which was sent. Few of the, you, uh, it depends on uh, how you're interpolating it. You might represent it in uh, something in this form. So it is not the exact uh, signal. Uh, so this is the first condition wherein you are under sample. Next condition also, if you just observe, what we have done is we have slightly increased the sampling frequency. So previously it was equal. Now uh, we have increased FS by slight amount. Now here if I do this, what happens is since frequency is higher. So for example, I have one signal like this and uh, another sampling frequency, say 1.2, right? Uh, so here again, it starts at this point, but its period will be over well before this that is it is its frequency is higher so here what happens during this position right i'll be getting the next sample i'll be getting the next sample so that is uh, what will be happening so here if you just observe in this case if i just observe i have one two three four five six samples but if i increase the sampling frequency right i'll get one two three four, five, six, seven samples. That is if I increase it by this much. That is uh, by just point two. if I have uh, increased it, right? Uh, then I'll be getting around one sample extra for this case, in this case. So here what happens is I have got one extra sample, uh, but uh, how it will be now? One sample is here. Next sample is available here. Next sample available is here. Next sample available is at zero. Next sample is available at uh, different uh, position. Uh, next sample uh, at the next point and next sample at this point. So what happens? Uh, so again, if I ask you to reconstruct uh, and suppose you are using the uh, sine wave interpolation, uh, it depends on what interpolation you are using. So if you're using sine wave interpolation, what happens is you might be getting the waveform uh, that is if you try to get back the original information, right? this is what you might be getting if i using a uh, linear uh, this thing right will be just joining these points so the waveform might be appearing something in this point so here uh, what is happening again uh, still if you just see uh, since the condition is not satisfied right uh, we'll not be able to get back the original information uh, which is not equivalent to the so still if i keep on increasing right so again slightly more i have increased so in this case what happens one two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So another one extra sample. So again, if I regen, right, again I'll be getting the signal in this spot. So here again, if you just see this blue line, if you just follow, if you're interpolating using the sine wave, right, this is what is happening. But this is not the original signal. So in order to avoid this effect, which is actually called the, uh, which, uh, which gives rise to aliasing, right, in order to overcome this, we go ahead with this information. Okay, in uh, next this thing, right, I think uh, Vijay sir has posted that he's having class at 11 o'clock. So what I'll uh, do is, uh, uh, I'll uh, continue with uh, this one in the uh, next class and uh, show you actually what happens when you're doing undersampling, oversampling, and uh, critical sampling. And uh, what might be the reconstructions uh, reconstruction when you're doing this. Okay, uh, so I'll uh, stop the uh, meeting here. I'll be stopping the meeting here. I think Vijay sir is having a class. Uh, Shivani, please take the attendance uh, and uh, let me know what is the attendance. Okay. Uh, I'll be ending the meeting to you all. Okay. I'll see you in the next class. I think Monday. Okay. 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 See you then. Okay. You can attend the other class.